all of this uh, with my next guest, Professor Tim Lurkhurst. He's principal of South College in Durham University and he's also a former BBC executive. Good morning to you. Good morning, Julia. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate you joining us. I mean, I have to say it's interesting to talk to you both as a as a, a you know a media expert, but also as someone like BBC, but also as someone who yourself uh, has uh, actually you know had issues with free speech. Uh, you were suspended at one point uh, from your uh, your role at your college over um, you know, simply an association uh, with Rod Little at one point. But um, so you you've been at the wrong end of this before. Um, We'll talk separately about the allegations that are against Russell Brand and how this is being handled in the media. But first up, in terms of the YouTube suspension of his, of his YouTube channel, what do you make of that decision in the wake of these allegations against the, the, the celebrity? Well, my understanding is that what YouTube have done is prevented Russell Brand from monetizing his contributions on YouTube. And I think that's rather different from taking it down entirely. I don't think he should be able to profit from making assertions which, whilst he may regard them as evidence of free speech, are in many cases complete fantasy. And I think that YouTube have got a right to say, you're not going to profit from this. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do... but who gets to decide? Well, I don't agree with R Russell brand on a lot of things and I agree with him on, on a number of things but why shouldn't he be able to make money giving his views on things whatever those views are well, if you have views which are rooted in complete and absolute absence of evidence, you wouldn't be able to publish them in a newspaper. You probably wouldn't be able to publish them on radio or TV. I, I hear such views all the time. Sorry? I hear such views all the time on loads of different issues. I, I, I hear a lot of views which I would describe as complete fantasy, and I don't deny people's right to express them. I think I wouldn't pay them to write them. No, but no, but no, but YouTube isn't paying them. The people who are subscribing, who are watching and seeing the adverts, the advertisers uh, get money. Um, uh, so, so, yeah, they, so, they, so they, 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 YouTube enables. Money. YouTube enables. But it's none of their damn business how he makes money. As long as he's not breaching the law, he's not. He's not threatening, even if he wants to you know, mount his defence against uh, these allegations he's facing. He's he's entitled to do so. And he's entitled, if people want to watch him on his channel, to make money from that. I mean, the, the, you know, we, you know, we'll, be, make, we'll be making money from giving our views. Julia, it's one of the interesting ideas in the age of social media that somehow everyone's entitled to a platform, whether or not they've got anything worth hearing or worth saying. Now, we're all entitled to complete freedom of speech, but that doesn't mean that any company has a duty to give us a platform on which to speak. It means that in our personal relationships, and to the extent that we can, we're entitled to express our opinions. But it is entirely le reasonable that companies publishers, broadcasters, should be able to decide whether or not they want to act as platforms. Oh, no, but except they don't take responsibility if, if you know, say, for instance, there's, you know, horrific, you know, paedophiles or groomers acting using, more than not YouTube, but other different, say, social media. They don't take responsibility. They go, oh, no, 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 we're just a platform, nothing to do with us, Gov. We're just like the publican who owns a pub and someone has, and someone has, uh, has said something horribly racist in the pub. We're not Julia, responsible think, for what they I say. Think, I think no, we're, no. Going to be in, we're going to be in very grave danger of agreeing here because I have long argued in print and on online and indeed on television and radio that all of the major social media platforms should be treated in law as publishers. Well no we're I not in agreement on that actually no because because I don't want them to have the right to censor people. I have no issue with people who have wildly different views of mine who have offensive views, views I find reprehensible or stupid having the right to have that said and I don't understand what business it is of YouTube but they don't stop people doing stupid challenges which people end up dying doing they don't they quite have to show revolting things on on YouTube but they're saying they don't want to have a, a, a well-known comedian and and you know campaigner giving his views when, when he says when, when they say he's violated their creative responsibility policy the trouble is these aren't very these are rather opaque these these policies um, as absolutely. we saw with as and, we saw with our page and, being taken and, down it's it's a random decision consistent. and it's nearly always a political decision they're absolutely inconsistent. They are seeking to protect their own reputation. They do not behave with any degree of consistency. And that's one of the reasons why I have always believed that the social media sites should be treated as publishers. It would be very good news for the mainstream media, for radio, for television, for newspapers, which do 
work according to moral, ethical and legal codes, which do think about what they broadcast, what they say, what they publish, and which take responsibility and are indeed in law responsible for the material that they publish. I think that that's very reasonable. And I don't think there is any restriction on liberty in saying that we must take responsibility for what we say and for what we yeah, do. Yeah, except, except, no, yeah. except the responsibility is always different depending on left or right. You've got, no. the, you've got the acceptable virtue signaling view. Let's come back to Russell Brown in particular. We've now got four women who've come forward to the media. Well, the media has approached them. They've agreed to speak and, and give their evidence, um, three of them anonymously. We've got a, a fifth woman who's gone to the Metropolitan Police. She claims that she was sexually assaulted in 2003. Russell Brand uh, has, in that video before the Dispatches documentary on Saturday, and since says, uh, insisted that he is uh, innocent and he, he, he denies any of these allegations of, of uh, criminality. Um, in terms of, you know, his, his live show being cancelled, you know, the YouTube page take, you know, well, well demonetised, um, the, you know, charities, everyone else walking away. Now, charities saying I don't want anything to do with them anymore. His literary agency publishers, they can choose to do that. But what do you make of the sort of the, the unpersoning, the cancelling of someone who faces these accusations? Because we've seen accusations against men before. We've seen, you know, whether it's Kevin Spacey, whether it's Paul Gampaccini, uh, whether it, with, with it's other people who, when they, they can face these allegations and then it goes to court and actually it turns out they've not been found guilty. Do you think that there is too much sort of cancelling of people who are accused of horrible crimes uh, that goes on before any actual fair judgment has taken place? Look, I'm perfectly happy with the legal principle that we are all innocent until proven guilty and that therefore pylons of this kind are really in many ways unacceptable. Mm. Of course, it's a matter of choice for the companies who publish Russell Brand, whether or not they publish his content, that really is up to them. But it, I certainly think that everyone's entitled to a fair trial. Now, there are clearly some very serious allegations being made about Russell Brand, but your previous legal commentator made the point that they're being made through the media. They're not at the moment being made through the courts. Yes, there's a report of an alleged incident in 2003, but there are no charges. The police are looking at it. They have not charged Russell Brand. He is formally Guilt, innocent until proven guilty. And I'll stand by that legal principle anyway. I don't like Russell Brand. I've never been a big fan. He doesn't do anything for me, but he's innocent until proven yeah, but, guilty. And also, that, that, those personal views people have about a comedian or a character should be completely irrelevant to, to that judgment, shouldn't they? Professor Tim Luck, I really appreciate you joining us. Fascinated to talk to you. Principal of South College, Durham University. Amidst this litany of astonishing, rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. These allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies, and as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then, almost too transparent.